Hi guys! In the previous video, we explained how to install Big Tree Text Touch Display for the Raspberry Pi and how to set up the Octo BTT graphic environment. In this video, we will show you three more graphic environments that you can use with your Big Tree Text Touch Display and explain step by step how to install each one. You want to know more? Stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! But before we start, please don't forget to hit like in this video and subscribe our channel. Also, if you like the channel and want to help out, you can join our Patreon page. Recently, Big Tree Tech released the new Pi TFT50 display. It's a 5-inch touch display and it was designed to be used together with the Raspberry Pi. Big Tree Tech also designed a graphic interface for the screen to interact with the Raspberry Pi called OctoBTT. However, there are other graphic interfaces that you can use with this display, such as OctoDash, OctoScreen, or Repetier Server with Touch Screen Interface. All of them are free to use except Repetier Server which requires a license, but you can try it for a few days for free. You can only use one graphic interface at a time, but if you have more than one memory card, you can set up each card with a different interface. To set up these interfaces, you need to download Etcher or Win32 Disk Imager. Both are free to use and you can find the links in the video description below. So, First, let's go through the installation procedures and we will start with OctaDash. For this interface to work, you need to first flash the memory card with an image of OctaPrint. So, go to OctaPrint's website and download it. Then, insert the memory card in your computer. Open Etcher or Win32 Disk Imager Load the OctoPrint image file, select the memory card drive and flash it. Once done, you will get a couple of new drives and one of them is named Boot. Enter that drive and search for the file octopiwpa-supplicant.txt. In here, we need to enter our Wi-Fi credentials, so that the Pi can access the web. So, in the WPA settings, remove the hash symbols and type in your SSID and your Wi-Fi password. Next, add this line after the password and before the bracket. Scroll down at the end of the file and change the country code according to where you are located. Ok, save this file and you can now remove the memory card and insert it in the Pi's memory card slot. Turn the Raspberry Pi on and wait for it to finish boot up. If the Wi-Fi was set up correctly, you should see the Pi's IP address on the display. Now, go back to your computer and open a DOS window. Type in ssh space pi at followed by your Pi's IP address and hit enter. If you get a question to continue, type yes and press enter. For the password, type Raspberry and hit enter again. You are now logged in to the Pi. Next, type in the following line and hit enter. Make sure you type in exactly like this and also make sure you use the capital letters when needed. For the password, type Raspberry and hit enter again. 
The installation takes some time, so be patient and don't interrupt the process. During the installation process, you will be prompted with a few questions. Use the arrow keys to move, the space to select, and enter to proceed. The first step is to choose the plugins you want to add. Next, it will ask if you want Octodash to automatically start on boot. The answer yes is selected by default, so just press enter. Next, it asks if you want to set up the update script. Also accept and press enter. The last one is to reboot, so select yes again, press enter and wait for the boot sequence to be completed. Log in again using the same method as before, type in the password and next, type in this line. Use the arrow keys once more to move the highlighted selection down to 3, boot options and hit enter. Then on B1 desktop, hit enter and then B2 console auto login and hit enter. Move down and then to the right to select Finish and let it reboot. Wait again for it to boot up and now you should see something new on the screen. The first step is to set up Octodash. For this, you need to connect a USB keyboard to the Raspberry Pi. In our case, we will skip this for now. Then you have the feed length and the feed speed of your printer. These will be needed for the filament change. Next is the communication. Then is the touch screen setup. Make sure you have the touch screen selected. And then is the plugin setup. Select the ones you want to have. And this step is done. Take your USB cable and connect the Pi to the printer. Now we need to start Octoprint, so on your internet browser, type in the Pi's IP address. Before we can use Octoprint and connect to the printer, we first need to go through Octoprint's initial setup. The first question is about access control. You can choose to have it enabled and define a username and password, or just ignore it. Next is to send information to the Octoprint developers, so choose if you want to participate. Then we have the connectivity check. And then the plugin blacklist filter. This one we recommend you to enable because there are non-official plugins that might interfere with Octoprint's performance and cause issues like lag and others. And the last one is to set up your printer. You can add the name and model. But for now, we will just skip this part. OK, we are ready. So go ahead and reload now. All we need to do now is establish the connection to the printer. You can change the port and baud rate if you want, or leave everything automatic. Then click on Connect. When the communication starts, you should see the status information as operational, and also temperature readings here on the graph and the installation is complete. We can now start to use it. The interface is very simple. On the upper corner, we have the settings. In general, we have the same settings we have seen in the initial setup, and some additional ones. In Octodash, we have the settings for the graphic interface.
In Plugins, you can enable or disable this group of plugins. And in About, you have the version and updates information. In Control, you can move all the axes, home the axes, preheat the nozzle and bed, turn off the heaters, restart the system or shut down the system. In Filament, we were getting an error message. And this is related with the plugin, so if you get this error message too, just go to the Filament Manager plugin and disable it. This way, you will not get the error message anymore. In here, you can heat up the nozzle and load new filament in. In Files, you can select the STL file that you want to print. Through here, you can only access to the file saved in your Raspberry Pi, so you need to access Octoprint and upload the files from there. Once uploaded, you can access the files. You also have the option to sort the files in many different ways. To start the print, just tap on the file. While printing, if you tap on the screen, you have access to three buttons. Cancel, Pause and Adjust. In Adjust, you can change the hot end, heat bed, feed rate and flow rate values. You can also adjust the first layer with the Baby Steps feature. To install OctoScreen, you will also need the OctoPrint image and flash it to the memory card. So let's start with that. Insert the memory card in your computer. Open Etcher or Win32 Disk Imager, load the image file, select the memory card drive letter, and flash it. When done, you will end up with a couple of new drives, and one of them called Boot. Enter that one and search for the file octopi wpa supplicant.txt. In there, we need to enter our Wi Fi credentials so that the Pi can access the web. So, in the WPA settings, remove the hash symbols and type in your SSID and Wi Fi password. Next, add this line after the password and before the bracket. Scroll down to the end of the file and change the country code according to where you are located. OK, save the file and you can now remove the memory card and insert it in the Pi's memory card slot. Turn the Raspberry Pi on and wait for it to boot up. If the Wi-Fi was set up correctly, you should see the Pi's IP address on the display. Now, go back to your computer and open a DOS window. Type in ssh space pi at and followed by your Pi's IP address and hit enter. If you get a question to continue, type yes and press enter. For the password, type raspberry and hit enter again. You are now logged in to the Pi. Next, type in the following line and hit enter. For the password, type raspberry and hit enter again. Next, we type in this line.
You will be prompt to continue, so press Y and enter. This step will take some time, so let it install everything. Then, we need to type this one. Make sure you type in exactly like this and also make sure you use the capital letters when needed. And then this one. When done, reboot the Pi and the installation is complete. You should now be able to see Octus screen on the display. The interface shows the indication that is trying to connect to the printer, but before you can do that, we need to set up Octoprint. So take the USB cable and connect the Pi to the printer, and type the Raspberry Pi's IP address in your internet browser. Go through the Octoprint initial setup as we explained before and click on Connect. If you check the display, it should now establish the connection to the printer. On the main screen, we have the nozzle and bed temperature readings at the left and buttons at the right. In Home, we can home each axis or all at once. In Actions, we can move each axis. We can also push or pull filament. In fan, we can control the layer cooling fan. In temperature, we can control the nozzle and bed heaters. In control, we can disable the motors and turn on and off the fan as well. And in tool changer, and for the printers that have multiple tool capability, we can control several tools. In configuration, we have the bed level, Z offsets, network and system configurations. This interface also does not have access to the printer's memory card, so we have to upload the file from Octoprint's interface. To start a print, just tap on the printer icon next to the file we want to print and hit OK. While printing, we can adjust a few things, but there is no baby steps control. This one is by far the easiest one to install. Enter the Repetier server website and download the image for the Raspberry Pi, which is this one. Then, insert the memory card in your computer. Open Etcher or Win32 Disk Imager, load the image file, select the memory card's drive letter, and flash it. When done, take the memory card out and insert it in the Pi's memory card slot. Turn Raspberry Pi on and wait for it to boot up. The screen will stay black for a while, but it's normal. It takes some time to boot up. On the startup screen, there is a language option if we want to change it. The first thing we need to do is to set up the Wi-Fi. So, enter the Wi-Fi menu and select your Wi-Fi SSID. And then, type in your Wi-Fi password. And then, tap to connect. Then, you need to select your country. So, tap on Region and search for your country. At the main screen, you can enter the license code. But there is the option to test this for a few days before purchasing. Next, 
take your USB cable and connect the Pi to the printer. Then go to your computer and type the Raspberry Pi's IP address in your internet browser. You first need to accept the privacy policy to continue. And then you need to create a new printer. Start by typing the name of the printer. And then set up the connection settings between the Pi and the printer. Next is the print volume of your printer. Then it's the extruder and bed. And finally the features. OK, we are ready. Click on Go to the printer. In there you can control many things on your printer. At the top, you can check the temperature readings and in Move, you can test the connection by moving the axis back and forth. If you want to change something in the printer settings, you can go here and review all the settings. On the display, you will get many icons. The G-Codes button allows you to load a file to print. In Move, you can move all the axes, home the axis and disable the stepper motors. In Change Filament, you can load and unload filament. In Printers, you can access all the printers that you have created in the web interface. In Status, you can check and control many other features. In Hardware Info, you can check some data from your Raspberry Pi. In Temp Graph, you have the extruder and bed temperature graphs, which is very handy. In Server Commands, you can shut down or reboot the server. In Console, you have access to all communications between the Pi and the printer and send G-code commands as well. In Import, you can upload STL files from a flash drive connected to any of the USB ports on the Pi. In Settings, you have many configuration options such as Network, Wi-Fi, Language, Screensaver and so on. And then you have the Restart User Interface and Shutdown buttons. At the left, you have shortcuts of the buttons we have just seen. To upload a file, you can do it from the web interface or from a USB flash drive on the Raspberry Pi. One of the beauties of this interface is that you can see the STL model on the screen and also Lots of additional information about the Sprint. And that's it you guys! These are the interfaces that we wanted to show you. All the links are in the video description, so check them out. Also, feel free to leave your questions or comments here on the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and if you are not a subscriber yet, go ahead and subscribe our channel. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. We will see you guys next time. Bye!